Hello there, it's been a while. Guess what? We bought a new one. This time it's blue. <laughs> Just kidding. This is Dolly. And it is owned by Dan and Geraldine. They are here from the UK. And we are going to help them do a few repairs on this thing. That's Dan right there. So this is a U3000 from 2006 which spent its first 15 years or so with the Red Cross in England. Um, it didn't do a great deal with the Red Cross. Um, in all that time it did about 20,000 miles uh, and we bought it uh, about two years ago and then went through the process of having it converted into a camper. I really appreciate the Red Cross making that happen for you. <laughs> Me too. And the German fire departments for making mine happen. Yeah. They're so nice to take off the uh, the first hundred thousand or so off the price of these things for us. Yeah, it's very kind of them, isn't it? <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. This is Geraldine. And what are you doing? I'm washing the windows like any good wife does on a <laughs> Friday morning. So a much newer version than ours. Just uh, hubcaps that just cover up the, the, the lug nuts and the CTIS pipe. And what we found was that we, when we, would, we left New York and we were driving west and we got as far as South Dakota and this, we had this rattling noise and it was getting worse and worse. Um, and it was a bit worrying, we weren't really sure what it was. So we went into this truck repair workshop and he just went, let's just try taking this off for a minute. So we undid the two 16 mil bolts and uh, rattle was gone. And it was just, it was just this rattling and it was, was making loose. us, it was making us concerned. Yeah. Um, it wasn't, well, as you can see, they're not, oh, yeah, that's they're not even loose, but it was, it was so close to the, the wheel rim mm. that it was actually just rattling about it, above it, rattling off it at certain speeds. Can you just it still rattles? Um, you just no, now? I'll show you what I did. Okay, double sided. I, no, I tried that, I couldn't get them to, to stick. Mm. So, oh, yeah. it goes, it just screws into these two brackets. Mm -hmm. So what I did was, I just bent them out a little bit. So they were a little bit further out. And that seems to have uh, solved the problem. So the CTIS is dead simple, you just pull the collar back and it pops off. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. So but if you don't do this up tightly, there's no, there's no valve in here. The actual valves mm. then moved to here. I see. Uh, so you can still use an airline at a workshop or something if you want to pump your tyres up without the CTIS. Um, but you have to make sure there's nothing leaking at either of these joints and they're done up tightly. Because I'd, I'd done something with it and loosened it uh, and woke up one morning to two flat tyres. <laughs> so we are going to change the hub seals in all four wheels because they are leaking. Just the front ones. Oh, just the front ones. Front one. oh, and they nice. shouldn't be leaking after 30,000 miles, but yeah. it's a 16-year-old truck, so maybe that's got something to do with it. Yeah. Free to work. I just wanted to make sure there were no bits of metal or anything in it, and luckily it came out pretty clean. Uh, but it was probably only, it was less than a thousand miles ago. Will this have enough capacity for it? If you get over mine, you can fill that up. Too. I'll put this down just now as well. There. I imagine it'll fit. I don't know how much. You know what? I think it are. should do. Yeah. I just had that sudden what if. This is me helping. <laughs> me take. Now the drain plugs in the. Now that shouldn't happen. Holy cow! No, that's crazy. You alright? Yeah. Did you get any in your face? Yeah, a bit. But okay. Eyeballs are Have good. you got any in your eye? No. No? Okay. That means the hub's under pressure. 
I checked the bleed lines. Remember I checked the bleed lines were all clear. That should not be under pressure. So that's from the CTIS? Uh, no, that's the hub. The, that's the hub vent, not venting. Because uh, what happens is, there's uh, this. This is the uh, vent line. Yep. From the hub, and it goes into the front diff. Right. Now, not long ago, I made sure that that was clear, okay. because one of the concerns was that this was weeping because it was under pressure. Ah, uh, right, right. And that was perfectly clear, and I was able to blow along it all the way to the um, to the front diff. And that was one of the things we absolutely, it was one of the first things we checked because that would be an obvious reason why this was weeping. What about the connection from the hose to the diff? Uh, Is there any way to check that? Or did you check that? I checked all the way along the hose. Yeah, I could blow here and it would come out of the diff. Yeah. But and then the diff's vented. Oh, it would come out of the diff itself. I see. The diff's, the diff's got another vent. So both of these go to the front diff and then the diff's got another vent. All right, so at this point we are checking the breather line to see if anything's clogged. So when the pressure builds up in the hub, the line is not allowing the air to release into the diff, or it's getting to the diff and it's not releasing from the diff. Either way, the whole thing's been pressurized, obviously. <laughs> By our uh, explosion. All right, so we have blown air through the, the vent line, which is right here, yeah. and it comes out over there on top of the diff. On top of the diff, there's a banjo. We blew air through it. It was blocked at first, and now it is flowing freely. Yeah. So we think that that problem of the pressure is probably solved. Yeah. So we're just going to go ahead with Why the. Why did it in the last thousand miles or so? I don't know, but I will just have to keep a real eye on it. And we're thinking that that's probably made the leak worse. Yeah. Almost definitely. I mean, yeah. it, it could have caused it to begin with, I guess. Yeah. And then probably made it worse. But either way, we would want to replace the seal, I would imagine. I think so. Because it's been compromised at this point. Yeah. So we're going to move ahead with the seal. Yep. And not a big deal. We just have a little bit larger of a cleanup job. <laughs> Quite a lot <laughs> larger of a cleanup job, yeah. yeah. Right. At least you're still smiling. I believe these pins tap through. Alright, we knock these two pins out. Ah, that's what holds the pin. Yep, there we go. <laughs> Pull pins and remove spring. There's our spring. That was easy. I'll take any progress I can get with these jobs. It's too bad we don't have uh, tool number 12. Yes. <laughs> Might be a little faster. Yeah, it's around too low. Oh, oh, oh. And you definitely Yay. don't need brake pads. Those are pretty thick. They're a bit oily though. It's not the best. <laughs> so, so it doesn't matter these aren't side specific? Well, or are they? Uh, so this one came out of that side. This one came out of that side. But they look identical, don't they? They do. All right. Brake pads are off. Oh, on one side? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if only it were. All right, both sets of brake pads are out. We are now going to remove all of these bolts. What are we calling those? Hub bolts? Yeah, let's call them hub bolts. <laughs> that sounds good. Because these would be like wheel studs, I would think, right? Yeah. The central, there's, there's a big nut on the end of there. Oh, yeah. And that's you can pull out the tube for the central tire inflation system and that's got seals on it so I had a suspicion or I was advised that what might be happening was that the air was leaking from the central tire inflation system into the hub so I've replaced all the seals on those I've had those out and replaced them so the pressure shouldn't be building up from but a uh, still a possibility it's still a possibility so the bolts are down, this is now unseated, and now air is escaping from yeah. the, the axle, so, so the just CTIS, need to get the and it's actually, since it's tied into the other tire, it's letting the other tire out, so we got to quickly... 
undo I'm sure it'll take a while to deflate these tires yeah. it should deflate the bolts. stops on the other side yeah. so all we gotta do is unplug that sweet yep look at that <coughs> pull the hub out pull the hub out sweet hmm I wonder what's next. I have a horrible feeling we may end up having to uh, take the calipers off. I really don't want to. All right, so brake pads are out. Like I said, originally Dan had thought, had been told that this, the brake rotor would probably just drop right out and we could leave the calipers in place. Yeah. We don't think that's the case any longer unless there's some secret trick we don't know about we don't have access to that info so we are going to take the front part of these calipers off there's two bolts here two bolts here but when we break them apart we're gonna have oil dripping so we have clamped the brake line just a rubber hose right there yeah. to minimize the amount that we're gonna lose so we don't have to refill the entire system and uh, yeah what size, uh, what millimeter? That one's a that? 10 mil. I don't 10 know mil? I use two different sizes. That one's a 10 mil hex and that one's an 8 mil hex. Yeah, that's but weird. I've got both. So Why would they do that? I do not know. <laughs> Good lord. Okay, so that's what we gotta do. Let's see what happens. That is weird. Ah, there we go. So oh. it should pull. Okay. Maybe that's enough. We shall see. We shall see. Shall we do the other side? Mm -hmm. Let's get those rubber deals. They look like they're in good shape, so... Just took a bit of video of this bit. Uh, can you see where they go? Yeah, there's a little bit of a recess here. Ah, you can see. Oh it's yeah. Like it's chamfered. That's good. And these slot these sit in there. And do you feel do you feel we've managed to rescue them? Yes, all four. Happy days. All right, a little key piece here, a little rubber seal goes here and here. Don't lose these. They're probably fifty dollars each. <laughs> yeah, they probably are. <laughs> Doesn't seem to be moving at all. Oh. Uh -huh. oh no! Oh shit! Right, let's get that cleaned up, Chad. Oops. That was Sorry. My fault. No, no, that was me. I stuck my hand in there. Right. Pretty good bit of skin off there. Oh! Alright, let's go clean that up. All right, what we're doing now is consulting with Paul in England, a Unimog mechanic. All right, we got it. Oh, phone call back. Nice job, Dan. Send well done. Well done. Do you want to sat on my phone? Ah, well done. All right, so all I had to do is use the pry bar. I missed it, but uh, we just had to put more into it, and it is off. Rotor, center of hub, you can see the, uh, what is that, a needle bearing? Is that what they call it? Crazy. Yeah, I think so. So you might want to put that valve back in now before we forget about it. That's a really good idea. And lose it. I'll just so this valve here oh, brilliant. goes at the very end down there, part of the CTIS, not necessary for what we're doing. So this is our seal that we wanted to replace. And it's not its not sitting flush. This side has been pushed out. So that must be why it's leaking. Yep. All right. Or pissing oil. Yeah. The technical term. 
Wow. So that's just gonna come right out. I think it is. This is the other part of the seal, which hasn't come off yet. Finger down. Because, as I understand it... That's not the whole seal. That's not the whole seal. Okay. This part needs to come off too. Now, what's not good is that if you, you feel... You, this, this has been pushed out. This bit of metal has been pushed out here. Mm. So the whole seal came loose, and then the seal itself came apart, it yep. seems. Looks like, well, yeah, it has, hasn't it? It's left not loose, but it, it worked its way. It's not flush anymore. And then the rubber piece uh, came off of that seal. This metal ring is part of the cassette seal. So the rubber's out, but this is still... Yeah. You see you see that ring around there, that metal yeah. ring around there? That's still I'm in there. Get that out so that's got to come out. And that's the piece you were talking about that wasn't flush? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think I'd have given up. No, you just wouldn't. You're not a quitter. The, he gave me the confidence to try again a little with a bit more force. From AC Price back in the UK, and uh, my son bought it across at Christmas. Okay. And it's quite an expensive tool. How much? So, uh, six hundred dollars. Geesh. Yeah. Oh, I see. Okay, so you're Thanks gonna for that. bolt that piece on, put the I'm seal on, then this comes so. over. And then we'll smash it in there. Okay. Smash it in. <laughs> Feels nice and smooth, which is good. I'll do the other side for you. Okay. And you can you can uh, <laughs> supervise me. Okay. Let's see if this will. Uh, I think I'm gonna need the 22 this one because it won't it's because that's sticking out mm. Let's hope this comes a bit for a bit easier than the brake disc. Come on! There's nothing you can hold on to. It's not, is there? That's coming. Now. That looks pretty flush. How does it feel? Feels good. Same thickness all the way around. Yeah. Same. Question is, is this for something? I think. It doesn't seem to touch anything. Doesn't. Wait, that thing. Ah. That. I'm sure is what that's That'll for. Be it. Yeah. Ah. There we go. Ah. Brilliant. Press both seals in, and we are going to put the rotor back on. So. That's disc for the people watching back home. <laughs> Put the disc back on. This piece here, up to here, is going to slide into here so that this presses up against here. We have it. <laughs> In theory. Which is tough. We should be able to use the bolts, the bolts to tighten it in, shouldn't we? Let's try. Let's try three. I can't do my ten by four.
feels like bolts of bottom there. Hmm, still in the gap there, that's weird. That goes on before the bolts go on, doesn't it? Does it not? Are there ten bolt holes in that? There are indeed. Yeah. Oh yeah! That's right. That's why it's not... Well that's good though, you push it on enough, it'll probably stay. Yeah. Push hard. It's just going to butt up against there, so I don't know why that would matter. Yeah. <coughs> now we put the bolts in. Careful with the fingers. <laughs> nope, not quite. Huh. Yeah, these things are way more dangerous to work on, that's for sure. Yeah. Luckily, Chad spotted the absolutely critical little rubber washers. Your friend mentioned those too, huh? Yeah. They're obviously easy to miss. Yeah. But they didn't get past you. So I'm going to line this up, get it tightish, and then now this was the rear one. We have put on the brake calipers, new brake pads, springs, the pins. Just went back in the same way they came out. That was non-eventful. Uh, we then bred, bred, bled the brakes, which was also non-eventful. Very simple. And I'll get into more detail on that, I guess, when I bleed my brakes. Look forward it to that should video. Should be the same, yeah. And that's about it. Now we're just uh, hooking back up the vent line. The one that was the hub vent blocked. The one that was blocked and is no longer blocked. So that's just a banjo fitting with the bolt. And then we're going to put the wheel back on, lower it down, and stop for lunch. And then tighten all these bolts to the right torque specs. And then we are going to eat lunch. We will be halfway there. So wheels back on. We torqued all the lug nuts and the brake rotor to hub nuts or bolts all to 400 newton meters, which is 395 295 295 foot pounds. Yeah. And we are going to leave this off because we need to do the other side. Yeah. And we broke a banjo bolt. I'll say we, but it was it was me. Him. It was entirely <laughs> me. And it wasn't even tight, was it? It wasn't. Even, I was able to just yeah, it must have been brittle. The bit by hand, so it must have been yeah fractured or something. Hub, and then this disc pushes the cassette seal in. It locates. Well, they were. pushes the, by tightening this, you push the disc in, which pushes the seal home, and it does it with uniform pressure, so it's doing it all nicely, all the way across at the same time. It wouldn't be fun trying to do it without the special tool. pushed it beautifully neat home. And uh, that goes, that fits on here. And then you need this one, which just fits inside here. And then if you bolt it on again, that'll push that metal ring home.
that's set. All good? Yeah, should be. Hey! That's nice. That's it, that's the new seal on. Woohoo! All right, we are almost done with this project. Got the wheel hub back on. We got the brakes back on. We just bled the brakes. Those are done. And the lights going down. The lights going down. We're topping off the portal oil at the moment, and then we will put the wheel back on and be done with this project. I'm sure Dan will be quite happy about that. Oh, <laughs> yeah. It's been a long day. It looks good. I like it. Sound dampening. Yeah, well, we're going to use the other stuff on the all of these upright. 